if there is something we can do as women while we're aging to help us feel less aware of things that are being presented as issues, like if I do my voice exercises and I then become unaware of my voice strain, then that's something that's off my radar screen. It's something that the intervention I'm doing is helping, so I keep doing it, and by virtue of doing it, it becomes less of an issue for me. Hi there, welcome to Ann Evolving. Well, as you can see, I am just getting ready for my day, and I thought it would be fun to just have a chat and uh, just spend some time hanging out. So I'm just gonna start with a face of makeup, and um, I'll share with you some of the products. If I remember, if not, I will link them down below. I don't know if you can hear my voice, but it is very raspy today. It's very thin. It's very garbly, and this is something that happens to me quite a bit. And I just thought we'd talk through it as a woman over 50. It's something that I noticed. I'm actually gonna start putting on my makeup because I'm looking pretty pale, but we'll talk as I share information with you, talk with you about my voice and the challenge that I have and that I think actually many women and men have as we age. I'm starting with the May Love. It's the Glow Maker. I'm just gonna put a few drops of that in my hand. I started using this product right at the end of January, beginning of February, and I stopped using the Nera because I truly wanted to see how this May Love product worked, and I'm using the Nighttime Moonlight Serum. So I'm using this set, and I wanted to remove the Nera so that I could see how this worked to refine my skin texture, to see what it did with wrinkles and whatnot. I don't know if I've seen my skin go back to where it was before the Nera, so that's a good thing. I do remember the information in the Nera saying that once you reach the results you like, that you didn't have to do it every day, but I just stopped altogether because like I said, I wanted to try the May Love products I'm really, really liking them. I like the texture of my skin. I like that when I wake up, I don't feel dry. I feel like it is helping with the very fine lines on my forehead. I will certainly do kind of a dedicated before and after of these May Love products because like I said, I started right at the beginning of February, January, so February, March, almost April the 1st. So that's a good eight weeks. So I think once I, I hit that mark, I will do a little video and share with you what I'm really seeing as far as my face and my lines and my wrinkles and my decision to um, stick with this and then go back on the Nera and, and kind of the regimen for that. But as you know, I love the Nera. The Nera definitely worked for me. Again, I just wanted to try these products and see if it helped brighten and lighten and kind of refine the surface of my skin. So that video is coming soon, you can watch for that. If you haven't already done so, um, please consider subscribing and you, when you hit the notification bell, if you hit all, you'll be notified every time I upload and you can be looking for this video in particular. This is the Jisoo Oil. They also have a hair fragrance that I love and it just, they have the pink top and the purple top, and I like the pink top fragrance. I haven't tried the purple top. It's a little hair mist that you can, or a hair fragrance that just helps you feel fresh. And then I also, I bought the hair mist with the hair mask, and it is amazing. It smells so good. It really makes my hair feel soft and manageable, really shiny, which I love. I don't know what it is about shiny hair as I age. It just makes me feel so much more youthful and, and healthy looking. So getting back to my issue with my voice, I want to say it was in 2016, 2017, 2018, time flies, uh, I'm putting on my, I'm sorry, I'm putting on my dermatology <laughs> moisturizer with sunscreen from, uh, that's, it's a universal tinted sunscreen, 46, so broad spectrum, <laughs> all those things. So I wanna say that it started in about 2016, 2017, I would notice that I would get kind of choked up and I would have a dry cough. 
and I was in a meeting once and started choking, coughing, coughing, and I actually felt my airway close, starting to close, and I thought I was gonna pass out. And it's so strange how people react. If you're choking, people tend to wanna leave the room because it's embarrassing. Well, it was the same thing. I left the room and I thought, oh my gosh, I guess if I pass out, I'll pass out. But I honestly thought I was about to pass out. And I mean, I, I thought I was gonna die because I couldn't breathe. I did um, some breathing to try and calm myself down. And I was able to regain my breath just very slowly. I had had some choking spells like that, but it just felt like, I don't know, maybe I was nervous and I felt like when I had to speak, I would, I would get choky. I've always experienced that in front of an audience. You know, your voice gets kind of tight. Anyway, this happened for no reason. I thought it was strange. So I made an appointment to see the doctor because I kept having also to clear my throat, the <clears throat> a lot of that. So I'm gonna do my IT CC cream. This also has SPF 50. So I went to the doctor and uh, kind of told her what had been going on and just how I felt like I was going to pass out or like I was, you know, I, I was about to die, honestly, because I couldn't get any breath. It wasn't just that my breathing was fast. I could not breathe and was like my airway was shut, shutting. So she did a scope. She put a tube down my nose, which was very uncomfortable. <laughs> and uh, she took photographs of my larynx. And the reason she did that is she wanted to make sure, you know, she wanted to look at it and see what was going on because that's basically, I guess, your airway. And she wanted to see if there were any growths or nodules or anything like that. And what it did was it was basically very swollen and closing. There are a lot of things that cause it and things you can do to fix it or to prevent it from happening again. It's something where when you change the things you eat or drink and you do things to strengthen your voice box around it, then it helps. So please forgive me, today I am having some issues with it and I think I know why, which I can get to that as well. Basically what is happening is there are people who have gastric reflux and there are people who have kind of a larynx reflux. So the reflux from the bottom is from acid from your stomach and it causes heartburn because you're feeling it kind of in your chest. The larynx reflux is, you know, there's, there's still, I guess, acid, but it's coming up through your vocal box, your, your larynx. So it can cause bad breath, which is also a struggle because your larynx muscle isn't sometimes as tight as it should be, that presents its own problem. And then it also can cause swelling in the throat, which feels like a knot. It feels like, you know, you have something in your throat and you wanna swallow or you wanna clear your voice. They call it LERD, L-E-R-D, instead of G-E-R-D. But when I went to look for it, for this video, I, I couldn't find a resource to share exactly. <laughs> so anyway, it's it's all about the larynx and the esophageal reflux of that's in the upper part. I've been doing a few things to help over the years. It's now 2023, and I've learned to manage this pretty darn well. Um, initially, it was uh, prescription for Prilosec. I did that and I was able to get my larynx back to normal. It's not swollen. It may swell occasionally and I can feel the effects occasionally, but it's not in that state that it was before where I would do something and it would just start to close. One of the things that I started doing was uh, you have to watch the food you eat. Anything that's acidic, like tomato sauce, red wine, which I love, but it's it's not good for my throat. You know, Mexican, like picante salsa, things like that, um, which I really love. I try very carefully to watch what I eat and how frequently I eat it. So recently I had pizza a couple of times, and then I had rose wine, couple of nights and I think those two things together have made it swell a little bit and I kind of forget and then my throat reminds me hey don't do that so let's see I've put on my CC cream and my 
um, under eye, that's the fit concealer. The next thing I'm going to do, the, what is it, Skin Awaken, I can't tell without my glasses, but I'll link it down below. But I use this as a bronzer. In fact, I'm gonna put my hair up first. Um, so anyway, I'm using this as my kind of contour bronzer, and I will take it up into that area above, oops, on top here. <laughs> See how that works. And then my little blendy brush, which called Artist. It's an artist brush. It's very old. And I'll just start blending that in as we talk. <clears throat> Again, I'm so sorry. I keep having to clear my throat, so excuse me. So anyway, those are the foods that I, I have to be very careful of. This also leads me to, uh, I guess, 2020, 2021 and 2022 when COVID hit. I noticed again that my voice became very frail and warbly and weak and pushed. Speaking can be very breathy for me. And I don't know if you've ever had this, and I do believe it is something that women, as we age, men, men too, but I hear my voice on the videos and sometimes it's strong and sometimes it's very weak. I'm trying to do a better job to strengthen my voice so that when I speak here, it's not so difficult to listen to. You know, I'm aware of it and I'm trying to work on it because I know that like right now, my voice can sound pretty strong, but I feel like I'm pushing it and so it's very tiring. And it's one of those things that I have to work on to build strength in that area. And with COVID, I think what happened is I was at home and I wasn't talking to anybody really. And, you know, we were working online and it wasn't that day to day. And sometimes just due to the nature of my work, I'm not talking to anybody for a lot of the day in my work, I am a communications professional and so I write a lot and that is something that doesn't require a lot of talking. And so when I am talking, I can feel the effect of me not using my voice box and so it can, it can feel very weak, it can sound very weak, it cracks. Here's what I did and here's what I'm doing. Number one, I'm very careful with the foods I eat and unless I forget, and then my voice will, my throat will start to feel kind of swollen, and then I know that probably my larynx is reacting. And that's the first sign to me that I need to be careful and to focus again on the foods that I'm eating. But when it comes to my day-to-day -day voice and building up strength in my voice, I went on YouTube and I found a woman, I believe her name is Katarina. I'm gonna link her channel below. She is so nice and her channel is all about strengthening your voice and how to do that. And she demonstrates exercises with a straw and she demonstrates things that you can do. And what I do is on the way to work and on the way home from work, I try and do these exercises. I do them because I'm alone. It's, it's a good use of my time and I'm just using my time smarter so that when I do get to work, my voice has some strength to it. If I am going to do a video or I need to make a presentation, I will take about 10 minutes and do these vocal exercises. Like I can't just do them right before the video or right before I talk. I have to do them every day and then just do a little warm up, kind of like a singer would do. <laughs> And so I have been in New York with my daughter getting ready to move her back in a few months and I have not been doing my exercises. I forgot because I'm not getting in the car and going to work every day. So it's been about five days and I just realized when I hopped on today that my voice was all crackly and weak and so I thought what a great opportunity to kind of hop on and share with you a problem that I have, that I learned about, and that I have some solutions for or interventions for that may help you as well. I think sometimes we don't really know how we sound until we hear ourselves back. Next, I'm looking for blush. I 
also, I, try, I found this amazing, this Clinique Black Honey. I don't know if you're like me, but when I was in high school, they had Clinique Black Honey in a little green pot or blue pot. And we loved it back then. It was kind of sticky, but the color, it's this color. I'm just so excited Clinique came out with this and I love it. I think the color's so pretty and it absolutely is the color that it was before. I don't know if they stopped using it or if they stopped selling it, but if you're like me and you've loved Clinique Black Honey, this is so nice and it's not sticky. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my Rare Beauty Pinch Liquid Blush. If you've watched any of my videos on makeup, I apply a good layer of blush and makeup because for whatever reason, maybe it's because it's liquid and I like liquid because the powders make me look kind of dry and aged. When I use liquid products, they really absorb quickly. So what I start with is not what I end with. What I end with does very much fade. So anyway, again, I'm hopping on because this is a real problem that I have had or it's a challenge. It's just one of the many challenges that women over 50 or women as we age begin to notice or not notice. Um, this is one that um, I noticed the throat because I choked, but over time after COVID is when I really noticed my voice feeling pushed and airy and weak and warbly. That was not the initial concern when my larynx started swelling, but after COVID, that is exactly what happened. And then in my work world, I was doing a news interview and I heard my voice and I thought, wow, <laughs> that's so weak. And it just didn't sound like me that I thought I heard. So if you are over 50 and you want to assess your speech, I encourage you to record yourself on your camera and you know do it when you wake up do it when you've been alone for a while and to hear yourself back and assess is that how i sounded maybe 10 or 20 years ago assess if it's something you want to work on for me it is because i am sometimes a spokesperson on behalf of my company that i work for and so i want to have a strong voice and i don't want it to be frail or sound frail and also being here with you i want it to be easy for you to listen to me there are going to be things there are going to be things i do things i say the way i speak be it fast or slow how many times i say so <laughs> all of those things i want to try and control as much of that as i can perhaps this is one of those things that I can work on and therefore I am. So there's the blush. Um, I love the Rare Beauty blush. I think it's very natural looking. Again, it's going to fade and I do have lights, so it may appear very much, <laughs> but it'll get better. Next, I'm just gonna use my Just Peachy palette and I'm just gonna go in with something very neutral and just put it all over the lid. That's kind of my story with my larynx, a problem that I have to watch the foods I eat so that it doesn't swell and close and cause coughing, choking and voice clearing, which is kind of what's going on this morning because of the foods that I've been eating and the drinks that I've been drinking. The other is the strength of a voice and things you can do to strengthen it or to help you feel as though the voice you hear is more like the voice you know from your past. And I think that's the thing is that it's there's nothing wrong with my voice and there's nothing wrong with voices as they age, but it is a factor of aging that our voices can get thin, that our vocal cords may not be as strong as they can be. And that is what I'm trying to work on, strengthening my voice box. And the exercises that I really like is the blowing one. Um, if I don't have a straw, which I don't on the way to work, position my mouth and do the exercises. And I just have Katarina's 
video on repeat and I just play that a little bit. And like I said, I do it for about 10 minutes every day. I do feel when it's getting tired, when I can feel my voice getting tired so I don't push it. She's very excellent about telling you how to do it and how not to push and how to do things that protect your voice. I will start doing them again and I will return to doing them and I, I think that whatever you're hearing today, what I am definitely hearing today, will improve. For me, it's a decision that is super easy because like I said, this is something I do for my job and it's something I would love to you know, come across here as having a voice that's easier to listen to instead of pushed. And I absolutely can hear it right now. And I absolutely can feel it right now. If there is something we can do as women while we're aging to help us feel less aware of things that are being presented as issues, like if I do my voice exercises and I then become unaware of my voice strain, then that's something that's off my radar screen. It's something that the intervention I'm doing is helping. So I keep doing it. And by virtue of doing it, it becomes less of an issue for me. I don't know if that makes sense, but it's the same thing with, you know, wrinkles or hair or fashion. If I do things along the way that set me up for success, then those are things that become kind of lifestyle habits and practices that help me maintain a level of confidence and assuredness that I'm taking care of myself. I think I'm gonna go ahead and do finish my eyebrows and mascara off camera and I will be right back. So that is basically the finished look today. I just did eyebrows and the Revlon Voluminous Mascara. And again, I'll put all the links down below and I'm going to work on my voice before the next video. So I really appreciate you tuning in and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.